Ever since I started collecting miniatures, I've always enjoyed making them my own. It could be as simple as changing the chapter of a space marine, using a savage orc as a source old blood, or mixing imperial knights with Game of Thrones. I've always looked for ways to use my miniatures in both war games and role-playing games because why not have a space wolf's wolf lord that doubles up as a werewolf for D&D or use Sarbag's gits in a one-shot adventure where the players are goblins or convert an ogre tyrant so that he doubles up as a miniature for a different role-playing game that I'm designing. When Edenith Deepkin launched, I was intrigued by the rules and the gameplay and wanted to start playing, but they're fish. I can't combine them with other role-playing stuff because, you know, fish. And I can't convert them to something that isn't, you know, fish. And I actually left the idea alone. They were cool from afar, but up close they were, you know, fish. That was until I saw this picture on Pinterest. They were definitely thralls and they looked really cool. And that made me think that I could switch out the eels and the shark and stuff with the coolest beast of them all. The Stonehorn and the Mornbanks. I first started with buying an Alapex and a Mornfang cavalry, literally because they have the same base size. I was surprised to notice that the shooter holder contraption thing uh, was held up by one beam that stretched way forward. One of the biggest issues I've had with the ogres on Mornfangs is that the saddle is set way in the back of the Mornfang and the Mornfang would literally break their backs if a fat ogre sat there. But luckily the shooter holder beam thing is so long that it can be attached over the shoulders where the Mornfang is, is strong. Uh, it makes things more realistic and those of you who follow my series know that I like realistic things. With a plan for one rider, I started to plan out where the second rider should sit. I found out that the rider almost fit perfectly on the neck of the Mornfang. And as I always say, if it almost fits perfectly, it needs more green stuff. With a basic idea ready for where the important stuff needs to be, I start to think about world building. Who are they and what do they do? There were three areas that I needed to fix. The neck of the Mornfang needed a saddle, the back of the Mornfang was very bare and needed to be filled with stuff. Uh, lastly, I need to remove all the fish paraphernalia. My thought was to add cargo in the back. Uh, it both added bulk to the Mornfang so it looks like the back is thicker and it makes sense that the shooter is hanging over providing protection for the cargo. That immediately tells me that these guys are traveling merchants. I've always liked traveling as a theme for my stuff. Ever since I made my Warhammer Dwarf army as exiles, I have made armies, adventures, and even role-playing games focused on travel and exploration. By the way, I got the Vertical Slice edition online if you want to play, so yeah, it's there. Uh, that's why I wanted to make Edenith Deepkin army as a traveling band of merchants. A cool concept for an army and something that I could also use for role-playing games as well. 
I looked a lot at elephant riders for inspirations for this build. It's probably the closest we have to Mornfangs and it's common for the riders to sit on the neck. I noticed that they rarely sat on saddles other than when they sat on the back of the elephant. And that they sat on the neck for shorter or lighter travel and for when they needed fine-tuned movements uh, such as elephant polo. I mean, it, it looks cool, it's probably animal cruelty, but still, it looks cool. Back to the saddle. Even though it seems like neck sitting isn't meant to be a long-term sitting, I have to shy away from my realistic tendencies to make things easier for me. So I stick with no saddle for the neck and just cover the neck with cloth. And when it comes to green stuff, the only thing I know how to make is cloth. So I filed down the fur on the head and draped it with a cloth that would fit the rider. Cloth is actually a good place to world build. The color says a lot about what resources they have and the shape and condition can tell a story. A lavish detail and well-kept cloth says that this is a rich and highly successful merchant crew. A torn or camouflaged cloth says that they are traveling the most dangerous routes. I opt for a thing in between. Adding some nice cloth, but also adding some scars on the Mornfang to show that this crew has been attacked before. Lastly, the fish stuff. I'm actually quite lucky that with these riders, the fish stuff isn't over the top. Well, uh, but removing something and sanding other things down, I think I'll leave it. I'm now more focused on telling the story of the riders. The helmet closely resembles uh, barbecue helmets. Uh, so I sanded down the unnecessary spikes and just left them. I also straightened the back of the neck rider to look more calm. This shows that the voyage is long and slow and not a speed race. I also replaced his hook thing uh, with a stick. Uh, it now looks like he's guiding the Mornfang instead. So this further solidifies the idea that the rider spends his day riding and taking care of the Mornfang. One thing to consider when world building with miniatures is weather. A consistent prop that popped up when looking at elephants were these large shelter things. My thought is that these are there to shelter from the sun, which I saw with these parasols in some pictures. I considered adding these, but if you look at the Mornfang, they have fur, which tells me that they do not live in a tropical or savanna biome, uh, but a more temperate climate. There are many different types of temperature climates, but broadly speaking, rain, snow and wind would be the biggest issues for traveling canavans. I therefore added more cloth to the rider. Thick wool cloaks both covered much of the fish stuff and shelters them from typical rain and snow that they might encounter. Now that that is done, I think I got most of it a traveling caravan crew on a Mornfang. I can see more world building using the base and color scheme, but I'll do that another time. Uh, this video took a long time to make, so these videos will be a few and far between. But check out my other content, and as always, like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to share this with your GM, they'll probably like it.